It's been a few weeks since the bottle shop in Columbus resumed business, but owner Barbara Reynolds noticed once they opened their doors, patrons disregarding the rules turned the bottle shop into a bottleneck. Trying to police everybody at the same time as trying to provide hospitality, it's, it's just like, you know, mutually exclusive. So it's like when you feel like you're shaking your finger in people's faces at the same time as you're saying, welcome to my establishment. So she did something unorthodox. She voluntarily scaled back operations, noting fruitless enforcement didn't pair well with her business. I, I can't in good conscience operate when my staff is terrified to come to work. Um, I, you know, I spoke to everybody and said, let's just push the grab and go cocktails, which we're doing in our market now, push deliveries and just hope that we can keep going that way. It's a problem souring industries all over Ohio. And part of the reason Governor Mike DeWine rolled out a new 6 p.m. mandatory mass curfew for the area's hardest hit. The governor says the violation is a misdemeanor, but enforcement still remains nebulous. While businesses are expected to urge their customers to do this, that a business is not required to enforce this. This is up to state and local officials. It's not on the business to enforce it. Two of those state officials charged with enforcement, Speaker of the House Larry Householder and Attorney General Dave Yost, are actively trying to decriminalize violations, seeing it as an infringement on freedom. Yost commented on the matter on Twitter, saying, We are free people, free to put others before ourselves, or free to be defiant. But because we have a right to do a thing does not mean it is wise. State Rep Nino Vitale, one of the most outspoken lawmakers against masks, was much less nuanced, saying in a Facebook post, Are you tired of living in a dictatorship yet? This is what happens when people go crazy and get tested. Stop getting tested. Meanwhile, back at the bottle shop, Reynolds is praying this good faith decision doesn't put her in the red. I mean, obviously, financially, it's really difficult. You know, nothing makes better margins than cocktails at the bar. But if it's not sustainable and it's not safe, it just it doesn't matter. While she tries to maintain a rosé outlook, she's pretty sure 2020 won't be remembered as a great year. Do you wish that those at the top were doing more for enforcement instead of sort of leaving it to the individual bars and restaurants? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. I mean, I honestly, I, I know everyone's in a different situation and, you know, a lot of places, if they're closed down again, aren't going to be able to reopen. And, you know, I don't wish that for anyone, but to me, it just really doesn't seem like bars and restaurants should be open right now. It's, it's, it's obviously not safe and things are just getting worse. At the bottle shop, Molly Martinez, Spectrum News.